be somebody who drinks two beers a night. Well, instead of telling yourself, I'm not going to drink beer anymore, cut out one of the beers. I saved mine up for the weekend. I know, I, I knew that about you. <laughs> <laughs> With your sweet roll. <laughs> <laughs> and then one other thing I want to talk about, I, there, there's the weights in there. Um, increased fiber and healthy fats, which are obvious. And then, you know, less sugar, smaller portions, but really I want you to focus on your pain, how, how tight your pants fit instead of your weight. Everybody comes in and they're always weighing themselves. I mean, that's fine. But really um, focusing on that, whether your pants are too tight. And, and you can't cheat and wear the elastic pants either, Glenn. <laughs> so, because the, really your waist, that tells you right there whether you're getting a little chunky or you're actually losing some weight. Do your, does your belt need enough, you know, can you cinch your belt? Or do you need a, a bigger pants? Point. Yeah, well, see, I mean, that's, Don't I'd rather people focus long. on the, <laughs> the they're, they're getting too long. You're losing in the wrong direction. is growing in Oh, my God. So I know, I know doctors like to focus on the BMI, which is our body mass index, which is our weight and our height, but that sometimes is, not very accurate. You know, if you're like Gary and you have a lot of muscle, then you'd be a lot, you'd be heavy, right? You'd be heavy on there. <laughs> you, it would show that you were overweight when maybe perhaps you're not. If you're carrying a lot of muscle, muscle weighs a lot more than fat, so it's not always accurate. Um, and we don't need to go around measuring body fat unless you really feel that's important. Um, I think uh, it's more, more your waist measurement. And I don't mean getting out the tape measure, just, you know, use your pants as a guide whether your pants are tight or whether they're loose. Um, I'm going to mention this real quick because for me this is really important and I could actually spend a lot of time talking about this, so yep. I could spend a whole, a whole, I have come Hour. back again, yeah. But really, I, I think this is more important than, than anything else. The quality of our food has gotten so bad in this country, and we were talking a little bit before about the grass-fed beef. It is really expensive. It's hard to find good, good um, animal, you know, good protein sources here in Wisconsin, I think. But um, grass-fed, if you think about an animal that's been eating grass, that meat is going to be more beneficial for us than one that's been fed a bunch of corn. And if you go into Pick and Save and you go into Piggly Wiggly, that's the kind of beef you're getting. You're getting beef that's been fed mostly corn, not a lot of grass. Um, grass actually has, there's more CLA in grass-fed beef, which is actually really beneficial for us. There's also more antioxidants CLA. and vitamins. It's that conjugated linoleic acid. Oh. <laughs> you wanted to know that. You didn't know that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's just... It's something that's good. Just remember that. <laughs> and it's from the grass. If you want grass-fed grass beef, go out to Highway D DNR. Oh, at... Uh, at uh, Cumro. Yeah, I've been there. So you can probably, both, there's little niches where you can... Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you had beef. I thought you had oh, yeah, he's got yeah, both. Yeah, he's got both. You can get, get you can... Buffalo he's got both of them. Buffalo and beef. You go to a store, how do you know which is grass-fed beef and which... Well, the most expensive one is going to be it's the, the grain oil. It'll yeah. have to stay on there and uh, if you really... The grass-fed beef is advertised that way. Yeah, it is. And it's really expensive. Costco carries... Costco carries, yeah, like organic... Beef. What I so I what I have found is they have hamburger um, that's organic. So that's even a step. That's even a step up. But um, that means the grass, everything the cow is eating, has not been contaminated in any way. Um, but what I have found is that Good Harvest um, probably has the the best tasting hamburger that's grass fed. It's not horribly expensive. It's like six fifty a pound, um, which is yeah, that's not they just don't eat as much of it. I also buy their stew meat there, which is, you throw that in the crock pot for a stew. It's really good, I mean, um, and then I just don't buy as much. It's expensive. Costco carries the, some stuff. Um, I just don't know, I didn't really care for the hamburger as much, but. So then it, it, if beef gets kind of a bum rep, they say you only eat it once a week, so if you eat the grass fed, then can you eat more beef? Because that has to be my favorite, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I can't, I can't really say, because I, I, I guess I would focus more on the quality of the beef, and if it is better quality, they and like better even like butter 
being from cows that are grass. You know, yes. the dairy. You know, yes. it's it's not just the beef. Right. Just but I think I wouldn't. As far as the whole saturated fat and cholesterol issue, I, I they they say that grass fed beef is okay, and I I guess I would personally say it's fine more than once a week, and I'd focus more on the quality. I think it's going to be it's going to be harder. I don't know. I you might have a harder time finding grass fed beef, but it's not just the beef. You know, it's chicken, sure. it's pork. You know, you think about what pigs eat. Buffalo would be excellent. You can get buffalo. Um, or venison, way. and you know, venison too, those things. Um, you know, it's just things to think about. I just want you to think about how the animal, what the animal ate, because that's really what's going to be going into your body is a bunch of corn. And you have to remember too that corn nowadays is really highly, you know, genetically modified and sprayed. So, and so are soybeans. So, you, those are the two, yeah. two biggies corn and soybeans. Um, and that's why we kind of want to stay away from that corn and soybean oil too, because it's really not not very good but definitely grass-fed um, beef and dairy is much better for us then the dirty dozen do you guys know what the dirty dozen is those are the, the 12 fruits and vegetables that have the most contamination they're called oh. the dirty dozen do you guys know about those no oh um, you could probably I should have printed out something for you so you could put it on your fridge because it's really nice to have the 12 out of all the fruits and vegetables they have the top 12 so like apples are in there Strawberries are probably at the top. Um, those yeah. are good or bad? Strawberries are very highly. You want to try to buy those organic if you can. Oh, so these are the ones that are. That you bad. If you can, you know, it's not it's not easy to do. But if you if you Google the dirty dozen, um, the fruits and vegetables, it'll pop up. And then there's the clean fifteen. They call it the clean fifteen and the dirty dozen, and it just means that it's a list that you can say, hey, out of all the fruits and vegetables, these twelve have the highest pest, pest, pesticide residue um, out, of, out of the others. So like bananas, they're low on the list, right? Because you peel that off, there's no, I mean, they're not on there. Spinach is on there. Strawberries is on there. Um, apples, really, which we can't always eat organic apples. We can't always, sometimes for, as far as finances, you have to decide what you're going to buy organic. You know, try buying organic peppers because they're on there. T little cherry tomatoes are on there. Those aren't easy to find, you know. So. I got the peppers. Oh, you got the pe you got your own peppers. Yes. That's the best way to go, because those are hard to find organic, <laughs> and you can't. So then you just don't. You just buy. You have to buy whatever's a pick and save, and then, you know, you just wash it the best you can, and. Or go but to that's, the, the Amish have a lot of organic. The Most Amish. Of, Yes. There's an Amish store or what? Oh yeah, Kip Kingston, there's one in Madison, there's one over Jefferson I believe now. There's an Amish bakery by my cottage. <laughs> 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 donuts. 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 Amish donuts. donuts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they got the best sticky bread. You can always there. tell the cop in me. Right? <laughs> you know, and Amish the farmer's markets too. Chemicals. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. How do you know? Grow is is That's awesome. I'm, yeah. li I'm listening to this. Yes. And I'm thinking, I bet you there's nobody in this room that picked out the lowest cost doctor to go to. I know, yeah. I think we go to doctors that are recommended. Right. Okay. But myself included, I don't, there's a really nice organic store in Neno that has all the organic beef, all of, everything like that. We've been in there, really yeah, nice stuff. Yeah. I don't go there because it's expensive. It's very expensive. So I'm thinking no. about that stuff. You so know, you kind of have to outweigh what you're going to gonna spend yeah. your money on. I feel like, I feel like since we moved back to Wisconsin, mm -hmm. there's something going on with the dairy here, and I, I don't know exactly what it is. I'm going to have to do some investigating, but I, I kind of feel like, I don't feel like the food is as healthy here. I could get much healthier food in Portland, and I felt like the dairy. I feel like there's, you know, they say there's no growth hormone in the milk. But they don't. They say they pledge not to put it in there, and I'm like, pledge. In other parts yeah. of the country, it says no growth hormone given to our cows. Ah. So I'm thinking of my kids because I don't drink a lot of milk. I mean, so I'm like, I can't afford a seven dollar gallon of milk because they go through a gallon a day. That's how much organic milk is. Seven bucks. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But, but then, you have to weigh. You have to decide. Well, what's more important? Yeah, I ju I justify things like that. You have to. 
but I do it like, well, I would think nothing of buying a, a bag of chips for four ninety eight. I mean, we don't buy chips, but like corn chips or right. something, or right. just junk food Toys. is right. expensive, right. you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> but he does. <laughs> oh. Behind your back, he does. There's, there's, there's one going one way and one going the other way. I guess. <laughs> It's just something I'm to think about. Yell that you know, and tomorrow. You can only <laughs> with these with these um, with the dirty dozen. You can only do what you can do. You can't. How? I mean, it's not that easy to get organic strawberries. I'll tell you, I had a couple of times where I was at Pick and Save this summer, and they had them. And I grabbed. I swear, I grabbed like four, and then I went back the next day and grabbed four. I made my kids like eat them because I don't. You can't get them. I have to drive to Trader Joe's, which is like a forty-minute drive for me. You know, it's just, well, just well, stuff like that. So you gotta pick and choose. Some of your farmers markets too will have. I can't yeah. say they don't spray. I don't really know, but you could. I guess you could ask the uh, whoever was selling the uh, produce. But most of the farmers markets, you know, it's it's pretty good stuff. I'll uh, if I can find that dirty dozen and clean fifteen or whatever. I can bring the. I can. So I'm get, I can. You, oh yeah. Just Google it. Oh, yeah, you and you okay. can. You can well, pull try those to put it on the website for everybody too. Yeah. And that doesn't work real well for me all the time. I know, but it's all right. <laughs> this is using food as medicine. Um, I want people to kind of think more like this. So when it comes to, for example, prostate cancer, one of the biggest things that you can eat every week is tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, because it has been found to, it's, it's that lycopene in the tomatoes, and that's got such a high concentration of the lycopene. It has been shown in studies to really reduce prostate cancer. So that's just an example. For us in breast cancer, it would be the um, all of the Brussels sprouts, the broccoli, that kind of thing. But you know, actually taking a handful of nuts, using eating a ha little small handful of nuts every day, you can use that as medicine. Um, it's a healthy fat. It reduces inflammation. Tea and red wine, they're huge. They're huge antioxidants. Um, so is dark chocolate. If you can't drink tea and you don't want to drink tea because you drink coffee and you're not really a wine drinker, you can take those in pills. You can buy um, green tea extracts that don't have caffeine. Very, very powerful antioxidant for preventing cancer. Um, red wine you can buy also. It's called resveratrol. Um, lots of fiber because fiber will prevent cholesterol. Um, it's, you know, some of the fats from being absorbed. Lots of um, whole fiber. So your Quaker oats, we're talking the old-fashioned oatmeal. Just make it, it's not that hard. Don't use, you know, instant stuff in the microwave, that's not good. Use um, brown steel rice, cutter. steel cutter even better. Brown rice, quinoa, just real grains. Um, if you're gonna eat bread, you know, bread's tricky. Um, and I know on that pyramid that I sent out, this pyramid is actually Dr. Um, Andrew Wiles' pyramid. I don't know if you guys, do you know who he is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a gazillion books. But this is his pyramid, and he's been, uh, this is one of his books. It's this guy right here. This guy? So this is his pyramid, so you can actually go to his website. If you, he has, um, this pyramid is, he really goes into depth about the foods on this pyramid. But he um, uses this, what's his last name? Um, Weil, it's W-E-I-L. He's written a ton of books. Um, he's more of an alternative. He's a, a MD, but he's he kind of practices um, more in an alternative. He he really believes in you know inflammation. He's one of the guys that ten years ago mentioned the fact that inflammation is actually causing disease. But this pyramid kind of focuses, as you can see, all the fruits and vegetables are on the bottom. Um, I I don't think sometimes I don't feel like there's enough protein in here, but. He's got eggs on there and he even has cheese. So he has like um, the real, <coughs> I think it's like Parmesan and maybe, I don't know what he, I don't know if it even says on there what kind of cheese, but it's the real, um, it would be like a real natural high quality cheese. So again, you're thinking about the cow, you know, eating the grass. But he um, talks about the seafood and, you know, incorporating soy. I'd be careful with soy. If you're gonna eat soy, I'd make sure it's organic. Eating nuts. And seeds like flax seed is really um, is really good for us, and so are chia seeds. Chia seeds, not a lot of people eat those, but you can throw them in yogurt. They turn it into like tapioca, and they don't really taste any different. And they're very high in fiber, protein, and omega threes. Can you and just all you need eat is them? a spoonful. Can you just what eat them by that? the spoonful, you or do they you taste gotta horrible? Throw them. 
They don't. No, they don't <laughs> taste bad. No, you have to put them in a liquid. Off. Those little chia seeds. You can get oh, them. Yes, you can get them. In a liquid. Liquid. Yeah, they come in a bag. You can get them at probably the best deal is at like Costco. Is that the one that grows on that little? No, no. Oh, that's a chia pet. Chia pet. Oh, a chia pet. Christmas is coming. The chia seeds? You can. You can put those little chia seeds in like any kind of, um, some people will use the almond milk with a splash of vanilla, throw the chia seeds. It turns into a tapioca. So I put them in my um, yogurt. I cannot go for them. And they're just, they're really. There's a lot of crackers now. They're, they are. You probably don't get much of them in a cracker. And remember, crackers probably aren't so good for us. So you want, you know, well, I can only buy two. If you can. Two different kinds. Of stores. Oh. <laughs> you go through the yeah. whole store. Yeah, I know. Oh, I box of this one. Yeah, yeah. But they do put chia seeds. They're putting them in chips. Um, you know, just make sure when you're eating crackers and chips, you look at the oil that they use because that's that's the kicker. Um, try to eat a lot of avocados if you can. Guacamole is great. Just easy on the chips, but yeah, I mean, you have to eat chips with guac. I don't know what else you'd eat it. I guess you can eat it plain, you know. And I was going back to the bread, I was going to say um, probably a better way to go with bread is instead of bread made with flour, you can buy the sprouted grain bread. So that's taking the, the whole wheat kernel and soaking it in water. It doesn't take, I mean, especially if you toast it, it's probably a little dry. I think the, the the heartier the bread. Put more it butter on it, too. Yeah, put more butter on it, that's right. As long as it's what are the brands? Butter. Is there a brand name of that? You or can Angelic? get, um, so it's the Angelic Company carries a lot of, so at Good Harvest at the health food store, you'll, but you'll find it at Sendix, I think, too. Like Sendix might carry that Angelic brand. It's Angelic? a local, it's a local uh, Milwaukee brand of bread. They make their own bread. It's called Angelic. Yeah, Woodman's they has sell it. it at Pink, 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 yeah, also, yeah. Kind of you're right. Oh, okay. Angelic. Angelic. And so they carry the sprouted. They right in the bread department? Right in the bread chewy. section? When you, it's not like that mush that's like six Yeah, no, I don't like that really fluffy like stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, I like you can toast grainy. It. And then they make the uh, kind of the tortillas that are really, yeah. I mean, those are full of seeds and but I mean that you know it's unfortunate, but we kind of have to get used to eating more of that instead of the regular that regular. Even though it says whole wheat bread, it's, it's not, they're kind of like he doesn't bread. even mention bread on here. He mentions well, he talks about pasta, like having, um, and so does some of the other. Um, they say pasta is not good for. No, it, yeah, wheat causes inflammation, but he says that if you um, use a pasta, it's better than bread, and he says don't cook it all the way. But I would still kind of stay, you know, watch your pasta. Area. Watch your pasta because it's, you know, you well, can buy whole, these. Whole grain pastas or wheat Yeah, pastas yeah. Or and that? then there's another cardiologist. He's got a book, a recent book, and I read it. And his says pasta too, but he, he recommends the, um, it's in every super, it's in every grocery store. It's the Protein Plus, the Barilla. Is that how you say it? Bar yeah. It's the Protein it's Plus because it's got, he says they use oat flour and they use some flax seeds in there. So he recommended that one, but um, you can buy this this device now where you can take your zucchini and you can twist it through there to make zucchini noodles. And you can saute those in a pan and heat them up with some garlic and olive oil and puts your spaghetti sauce over those. It's so good. And you're using zucchini. Um, a lot of people use spaghetti squash with their mm -hmm. tomato yeah. sauce. Um, with Turn the, me into a squash. My wife makes, makes lasagna zucchini. Oh, there you go. I just, yeah, slice yeah, it. Yeah, slice the, slice yeah, it. that's perfect. Yeah. And then, you know, with like spaghetti sauce, you know, just make sure um, Newman's puts out one where he just uses olive oil. The others use a lot of the not such good oil. So just pay attention to your, and you know, spaghetti so you sauce has a lot of, like, yeah. if you can make your own. That's what we do. I think I'm coming over to your house. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I had time to make my so own spaghetti you, sauce, but if you can make your own. And juice then and everything, the juice we make and everything mm -hmm. would be? Yes. Oh. Tomatoes, that lycopene is big. Okay, and more fish. Fish is hard to get here, but lots of, you know, wilds. The Pick and Save just had some excellent, um, was it sockeye? It might have been, I think it was sockeye. I bought it two weeks in a I bought it, like, back to back because it was so good. And it's, sometimes you can't get fish there that taste that good, but they might still have some. It was on sale for, like, nine ninety nine. Frozen or fresh? No, it was, well, I think it was previously frozen, but it tasted pretty fresh. Because sometimes it doesn't always taste that good. Um, two, then he also recommends tons of beans, chili, legumes, whatever you can, however you can cook beans, um, lentils, legumes, you know, 
and all that stuff. Lots of fruits and vegetables. So my, I did a little experiment here, but you know, it's not really, I have such good apples, it's not really turning out, but I just want to mention, this is an experiment they do like in fourth grade. But they cut um, a piece of fruit and what happens, and this happens with um, avocados, I should have brought an avocado. It starts to brown, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this, is what, this is called oxidation. And this happens in our body every day to all of us, right? When you put lemon juice on it, and you can't really see the difference a ton, but a little bit, right? This is the one with the lemon. Okay, lemon is, lemon is an antioxidant. This is your, the lemon is your fruits and vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. So the more fruits and vegetables you get into your body, the more antioxidants, the less of this you're gonna have, if that makes sense. LDL are bad cholesterol, the real small ones, because there's different kinds of LDL, but those real tiny ones, when they become oxidized, those are the ones that get into the lining of the artery and deposit the cholesterol, which is then becomes plaque. And without this occurring, they also say that that LDL might just you know float around. Um, if you don't have an inflamed artery and you don't have the oxidation, so the best way to protect against this is from putting as many antioxidants into your body as possible every day. And it's not just heart disease. It's eat a lemon a day. Eat a lemon. You should, it's good for you. It's squeeze it into your water. It's one of the best things you can do. CoQ10 I want to mention. Um, this winter, everybody here, all of us, including me, should be taking vitamin D and fish oil. Fish oil is a huge anti-inflammatory. Um, there's different kinds of fish oil. I, can't, I won't have time to really go into all that, but make sure you pick a really high quality supplement if you're going to take fish oil. But doesn't it always it shouldn't. So good fish oil should not be doing no. that. When so you say B, you mean the complex or just some one of D. Oh, vitamin D. 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 Yep. Okay. Because we don't get sun here in Wisconsin as much, you know, in the winter because we're all, we have our hats and our coats on. Vitamin D is very important for the immune system. Some people don't know that, but it's, it's one of the most important um, vitamins. And in the summer, we probably don't need it. CoQ10 also. We, our bodies make less of it as we age, and those darn statins, yeah. get, you just, you don't have any of that. If you're taking a statin, you, that CoQ10 is depleted in your body. They also have done studies, where they find that people that have heart disease have really low levels of CoQ10. CoQ10 is important for energy, um, the energy of our cells, and what uses cells more than the heart? Nothing, the heart uses so much energy CoQ10 is, is needed. It's an antioxidant too. Where do you get uh, CoQ10? Is that anywhere? I mean, is it in a multivitamin? It's in a, um, a separate vitamin. Yeah, you can supplement. It comes in other things too. Like I take a supplement that has the CoQ10 in it, or you can get it um, by itself. Um, but it's sold right by the. Oh yeah. Vitamin D. It's sold and all everywhere. That. Yep. Yes. Yep. And so that is a really important. Um, Important supplement, reducing stress. We won't talk too much about this. I don't think anybody in here has any stress, right? Yeah. No. Sleep, I would say sleep is the big one. Um, getting, making sure you're getting enough sleep. Also, quiet time. You know, they're really, they're really pushing meditation even for five minutes, just closing your eyes. And there's, there have been a lot of studies that have been shown that even doing this for five minutes is... Yeah, I can't, you don't think, I know you're asleep, but we do. I don't know if that counts. There's nothing wrong with an app. I don't know if that counts, so I don't know. It's a heavy meditation. Yeah, I appreciate it when Augie does that. So, stress plays a pretty big role, though, in disease, so. What should you last two weeks, yeah, don't maybe uh, give up on the Packers. That that creates a lot of uh, those. Oh, 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 <laughs> One in the last couple minutes. A lot of stress. A lot of stress. <laughs> take yeah, care, make sure you take your stress. aspirin before those games. <laughs> but the you know the cortisol is released when we're under stress. Sometimes we don't realize we're under stress. Um, obviously, there are different forms of stress, but stress does some damage, and it contributes to the the inflammation again. There you go. So um, making sure you're getting a good night's rest exercise, um, you know, having a good um, circle of friends is important too. And then I think that might be my last slide. Yeah, that's it. This is all you have to remember, Glenn. Move more, Are you eat less, and eat better. How's that? <laughs> oh, that's no, I thought you meant every word. Better not show up at bonus tomorrow.
<laughs> yeah, you know, um, we've got some important people coming through, so I think Carrie already gave her well, a lecture. She came around. Did she come around Sorry. and say, please don't bring him in? So we have, we have Jayco coming. Monday, Monday we had donuts. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. One of the guys had the wrong shirt on last week. And then these are, like I said, little tips. You can put them on your fridge, and Glenn, we'll see how many of these you can do, those little tips. Any, does anybody have any questions? I've got my system now packed out pretty good. Yeah. Um, three Minutes makes a um, pasta that's uh, it's got like 25 grams of fiber in it. Ooh. That one, that 150, that one five volt. I'm wondering how yeah. that compares to the other, and it tastes good. It doesn't so what's taste What's it called? Well, it's Three Minutes, minutes and it has the one five oh one. Oh, look for that. Okay. Right. I think that one would work too. But huh. it's, uh, it doesn't taste like. Does it taste really meaty? Really pasta. Okay. So, anyway. Everybody sign in? Yes, Gary. Why 